Welcome back to the ABG Investor Days. My name is Johan Brown, a retail analyst here at ABG. I now have the pleasure to welcome Kevin Kviblad, uh, CEO of Urbit. The floor is yours. Thank you, Johan. It's uh, super exciting to be here to talk about Urbit and uh, how our growth has become from the last quarters. Uh, I know it's uh, the last presentation for today, so I'm going to make sure to keep it quite uh, co short and consist. So bear with me here. So the demand for high quality service has never been greater than today. And this is actually what's fueling our business. This is the trend we have seen for the past year and also been accelerated by uh, Corona situation in all over Europe. But before I go through, through the what is actually driving the growth, I, I thought we could look, watch a short video regarding what is Urbit actually and what are we trying to do. So simply put, uh, our business model is to tap into existing ecosystem, uh, partner with retail brands and logistic partners out there in UK and France where we are operating today, to be able to perform deliveries, have an assets light and eco-friendly delivery model, basically using a, a crowdsource model to be able to deliver uh, to the needs of the customers. What we have done is that we deliver a best-in-class service with a customer satisfaction of 4.92 and also 99% delivery success for the first, uh, with the first attempt. So what is driving this? How is this possible? Our delivery assistants, as we call them in uh, our crowdsource model, uh, the Herbers, is the backbone of the service. Uh, they are performing deliveries by foot, to public transportation, cargo bikes, or bicycle. That's the, actually the easiest and fastest way to access the urban environment. Uh, the recruitment process is that we are carefully uh, recruiting and licensing and uh, herbers that we call. And only 23% of the candidates actually are accepted. The herbers are guided by our urban support team and also constantly being educated regarding how to perform best service. And of course, when you're using a crowdsource model, it's super important to make sure that we have fair wages, we make sure that we have insurance, holiday pay, and pension for our herbers, making sure that they can trust us and perform the great job that we are expecting them to do. So how is this possible? We have a platform that uh, we use to monitor and um, enable these assignments that we call them. We have an API where our partners and platforms out there can integrate with us that enables us to trigger those deliveries. We have a, cons a consumer portal, as you can see to the right here, that where consumers have full transparency over the whole process. They know when the product will be delivered to them, where and by whom, who they can contact if there is anything that they need to be ch changed. So full transparency and flexible flexibility. So last mile industry is growing, has been growing for uh, several years and actually been even more accelerated by COVID that we've seen uh, that happening in Europe. 
So what is actually happening? We have the parcel boom. Basically, more and more people are buying online, and with that means more often purchased also. And with that also come the return process. A lot of packages is being handled and is increasing daily. On top of that, you have the customer uh, demand, basically demanding speed and quality of service. It's not good enough to get your delivery a couple of days later and you don't know when that will happen. So, and that is something that we see that the logistic companies are struggling with to perform the scalability to handle the parcels, but also the service quality. The third element is the ship from store that we also see. As you saw in the, in the, in the short video, we, we can pick up and we, we do pick up from the stores. And this is something that has been discussed uh, for several years within the industry, but actually starting to uh, come in place uh, during this year. Basically, retailers are looking for how to increase speed and cost efficiency by using the existing store networks and inventory they have and the store personnel and taking the shortest distance from the product to the consumer. And this is where the stores come in. So timing, everybody talk about timing. Timing is crucial for businesses. You have to have be lucky or just make sure that you actually find the spot there. And timing is now for logistics. And we have, Urbit has shown a proven record that we have a place, uh, position play. The elements that we are, have proven ourselves is the scalability. The model is highly scalable. We have expanded to new cities within three weeks and a cost of only 7,000 euros to be able to do that. We have scaled our business with 300% over, over 30 days period. Doing that without compromising the quality of the service. 99% successful on the first attempt. I'm going to pause there because this is a huge number and I always get a lot of uh, questions about that. But this is actually the fact. 99% successful on the first attempt. We have a custom satisfaction of 4.83 out of 5 during this period, even though we have been growing with 300%. And absolutely crucial for us, our community of herbers, herbers satisfaction is 4.97 out of 5. Almost perfect score from our herbers. They believe in us. They find us as fair, um, with fair uh, pre employee benefits, etc. And we have done all this without compromising the environment. We have zero car carbon deliveries. We don't add any noise or congestion to our cities. And this is something that both our customers, uh, as such as retailers, but also consumers are uh, valuing highly. So more proof here. Uh, we entered the, uh, the partnership with DHL uh, last year. We started uh, with one location in Paris. Basically what DHL uh, contacted us was that they want to improve the customer intimacy and customer experience on deliveries. And we, this was something that we could provide. They are also looking into green delivery options. DHL aims to have 100% green supply chain within coming years. And on top of that, they are struggling with capacity, especially in uh, highly dense cities such as Paris, where, and this was actually even more ex accelerated by COVID. So after proving ourselves and going through the process and showing that we can do what they are asking, we have uh, increased, we have entered a partnership, full, uh, full partnership and expanded our service to another three location in Paris, totally four locations, and we are having, we are aiming to have six in total in Paris. In parallel, we're discussing also expanding the similar concept to Leon, but other cities in Paris to be able to enable that, uh, the benefits that the DHL is asking for. The customer intimacy, the green delivery, but also capacity to be able to handle that. And this is the uh, ultimate proof for us to get this, uh, our model validated by such a big player as DHL, that it actually believe in, it believes in us and actually continues to add more. So with that said, we are not, uh, we are not satisfied yet. So we have an expansion plan uh, for coming two years that we are executing on. We are currently operating in uh, UK and France, and we started in Paris, uh, London, and Lyon. 
We're expanding to several cities in um, UK and France, basically building the momentum where we have already seen uh, that our model is successful. So such as cities such as Birmingham, Manchester, Marseille, Lille, and so on. And next phase, phase we are looking into expanding to other larger cities where they are highly populated, dense populated ones struggling with congestion and delivery problems, such as Madrid, Barcelona, Berlin, and Rome. So, I promise you guys I'm going to make this short and concise as possible. Uh, hopefully I was clear, clear regarding what we have done and what we have achieved so far. So I'll tie back to where I started, the demand for high delivery, uh, high quality delivery service has never been greater. This has been a, a growing market before uh, COVID with the digital, digitalization and the need of purchases online, but we are seeing the exponential growth now with the situation we are in. And what is driving our business is service excellence, highly scalable, and also being an eco-labeled partner as we are uh, with Bra Miljö Val that is certified in Sweden. So that was everything for me. So thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation. So first of all, I want to ask a bit about how the management situation looks like. What, what, what is the management team? So we have a, we have a really small team, uh, totally 30 people uh, globally. And the leadership team is the divided into to each market. So we have a country manager for uh, France and a country manager for UK that is driving the business together uh, with support of me as a, as a CEO and our product team, uh, where we have a CTO that is supporting the team. Though. So it's a small team with totally 30 people in three countries, two countries. All right, thank you. So uh, moving on a bit to the payment model, how, mm. how do you get paid by these retailers mm. or, or your partners as, as, such mm. as DHL? So customers, uh, our customers are the retailers and partners, as, as you mentioned. So we are getting paid per delivery, not per delivery address. Some of it can be per delivery. And it's based on uh, distance model and pickup location. So the, given that we operate in, in Paris and London, there is a zone different zones, depending on which zone we pick up and the distance to the delivery address, then we have a model for pricing. So this is, in, this is nothing unique. We're basically using the same model that many logistic companies are using in, this, in these two countries. Mm. Thank you. So moving on, you, you mentioned Paris and Lyon and mm. such. Uh, what market uh, or what category of retail do you see the most potential in? I think our model works really well in highly dense cities all over U Europe, and majority of retailers are struggling with getting the packages out from uh, logistic hubs or stored today. So I wouldn't say this is specific segment of business. Absolutely, we're not working with um, retailers that uh, have very bulky products such as IKEA that we, we need to carry a sofa on a bicycle, but majority of the retailers that have basically uh, shoe size packages is perfect for this type of logistic uh, deliveries. So we are looking into the more different, the city, the size of the city, uh, the accessibility in terms of uh, public transportation, and also the type of retailers that we want to mm. address. Um, so moving on to the, uh, when you, when you scale into a new market, you mm. mentioned how cost effective that was. Mm. But what what do you do operationally when you when you enter a new mm. a new geography? Basically, what we do is uh, for the first we need to recruit our community, build up the community. We start by advertising that we need help and talk about the vision and the processes around that. That this is a flexible job that you can have on your terms, basically. So building the community is the first step and. Uh, that takes a week or so, and then discussing, depending, when we expand to new cities, we all often do that with a retailer or a customer. We go, so we start building that volume, that basically that the base capacity needed to be able to grow from there. Mm. So community comes first together with the retailer that we are expanding to the city. All right, thank you. So um, 
looking into competition, mm. uh, how do you view the potential threat from players such as uh, uh, Uber Eats mm. or something, something uh, of the such? Mm. So last my delivery is kind of a, kind of a big uh, segment. You have the instant deliveries such as uh, Deliveroo, Foodora, Uber Eats, etc. And they are struggling with peaks during the day, lunch peak and uh, then they have dinner peaks. And it's basically instant delivery in terms of that uh, the order is placed one hour or half an hour before the, you need the food. And then you have a uh, very short amount of time to deliver that. So that segment is really crowded right now. That's not where we operate right now. We operate in the segment we call the courier um, deliveries, basically delivering from retailers to that has on-demand production or on-demand uh, inventory, such as florists, pastries, etc. And there is a even kind of a volume peak during the day. And then we have the parcel logistic, last mile logistic regarding ship from store, uh, central located hubs we pick from, such as DHL, and those bigger segments. And there is not as crowded as instant delivery, where it's really crowded, but still a lot of good players that are trying to do similar things that we do, that we compete. And I think competition is always there. So you have to know about them, you have to acknowledge them and trying to be better than them. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. So one last question from me. Um, where is Urbit in five years? That's a good question. Uh, in five years, I see our, our service being operating in the majority of the biggest, largest cities in Europe. Uh, and uh, I'm seeing that also happening in, across, the, across the US. We see a lot of questions regarding New York as a potential city to be in, given the crowd, or given the volume they're talking, and the struggle they have with the congestion and also with air pollution. So I would say, yes, in majority of the largest uh, cities in Europe, uh, have performing those urban deliveries that is uh, crucial for the businesses out there. Mm. Thank you. So. With that, the presentation is over. We want to thank Kevin for, for your presentation and wish you all the best of luck in the future. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.